You've changed. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yay! Hey everyone, it's Emily the Fangirl. If you're interested in tech, travel, and working in Asia, then go ahead and click that subscribe button to follow along. Today is going to be another video on part two of Maruf's interview. So for those who have seen the first video, he talks a lot about his cultural identity, moving from Afghanistan to China. In this episode, we're gonna talk about what he thinks how tech is developing in China, what his forward-looking thoughts are, and just giving us some insight on his own personal experience, being someone who has worked at an incubator in the heart of uh, Zhongguancun, which is a tech center of China. Hi, my name is Maruf Bashiri. And Nihao, I'm from Afghanistan, Afghan. Currently, I am living and working in Beijing. Beijing. Kind of transition now into tech in China, right? So more of your experience working in China and what your life has been being an employee of an uh, innovation center, as well as kind of like the forward looking thoughts that you have um, now that 2020 is ending and there's 2021 right around the corner. Right. So yeah, I know you're, I know you were working in Beijing and we actually have never met in person, <laughs> but we have talked on LinkedIn and we've Hopefully done we a lot of Zoom videos <laughs> right. and now we're good friends. It would be very helpful to, kind of understand what the landscape looks like right now in Beijing and talk more about, you know, what does Zhongguancun, the, the tech center of Beijing, what does it look like? And um, what's your personal opinion on the tech scene that's developing there? I was shocked when I heard the first time, I think within the first week of my stay in Day Day Up, uh, that they told me uh, more than 85% of all technology companies in China are located in Beijing. Mm. Wow, this is a huge number. This is such a huge number. Uh, you, even though we have like tech giants like Tencent and Huawei and these are the companies like, for example, who are in Shenzhen and Guangzhou, but then 85% of all of them, all of them are technology companies. Deep tech uh, AI is a pioneer in embracing these startups, technology startups to, to go there, develop, and even have a lot of opportunities uh, to, to grow themselves. Which brings us to our second question that you mentioned about the Zhong Guan Sun. Uh, well, I look, so many times I've heard this, um, even the, I, never, I never knew what is Zhong Guan Sun because we had a lot of conferences in 2018 and they would tell me like, you have to go to Zhong Guan Sun and then that's where Beijing University is. I was like, okay, but it, I thought it's just the road name. But now the Silicon Valley of China it is actually not a place. It is not a, it's not like I take you somewhere like this is the Zhongguan Sun. It's, it, it's not like that. It's, it's a hub that, that exists all over Beijing. Zhongguan Sun or the Z Park, their English name is Z Park. They don't really wish to be called the Silicon Valley of China because they want to have their own unique position in this technology world or market. And their positioning, they, they would like to position themselves as a place where international and local Chinese technologies emerge and connect. And they give a lot of support for local and, and uh, international startups, especially the ones with uh, deep tech. Mm -hmm. They just give all kinds of support from financial support. They have a lot of kind of competitions where they help uh, startups to have a small kind of competition or really big ones like the Z Forum, where they give a really huge, like even like a few million dollars in prizes. Wow. So yeah, like a few million dollars, like cash on the stage once the, and then it's the first position does not even go to one company. It's like five companies can get the first prize and every company can get up to like a few million dollars cash as well as some a, a very nice place where they can start their startup. You know, like there's a lot of facilities that they provide. And all of that is because mm -hmm. they really want to attract high quality international startups to go there and to grow up and then hopefully mm -hmm. give the position that Zhongguan Sun is looking for, uh, which is kind of be the bridge between the international and Chinese technology companies and to support both sides in any way they can so that they can grow and develop themselves and reach those high goals that they have and hopefully turn into a unicorn so that we see will later on change the way we live like DD, like ByteStance and all of these companies are actually a part of the Zhongguan Sun. I remember you also mentioned like you were saying that it's an intersection of like international and domestic startups and companies, right? Mm. Is there a lot yeah. of opportunity for 
people overseas who want to work there in Beijing? Or do you think that they hire more locals? Like how receiving are they from people who work outside? Because from what I know as well, a lot of Chinese people have worked overseas and now they're coming back, bringing back their skill mm -hmm. set and what they've learned in school, et cetera, and they're bringing it back to China. So what, what do you think about that? If you're talking specifically about working there, like I, I want to work in a specific company, and which is a part of the Zhongguan Tsuen, or uh, working for Zhongguan Tsuen, they mm. also do welcome foreigners a lot, especially they need a lot of foreign talents mm. to, again, if you want to have, if you want to be a bridge between international and Chinese, um, uh, Chinese startups or companies, then you need a diversified uh, team in order to make that happen, both practically as well as in the administration perspective. So they do receive a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people that I personally know who work in Zhongguan Sun or who are in companies who are in Zhongguan Sun, and there are no limitations actually for, for that perspective, as long as the person who wishes to join that company is actually, you know, having something valuable to uh it's not just something the thing is that it's it's like very valid point which i believe if there's something that a foreigner doing or a job a position that a, a foreigner is applying for which a chinese can easily do then they don't need that foreigner right mm -hmm. so a foreign talent is someone something that we and it should be like that way like that's that's how we should protect our job market yeah. uh, but if there is something that we think that the, this person this talent is able to make a really a, a, a huge difference Mm -hmm. then they always give that position to uh, the foreigner without having any problem. And I myself, because Dei Dei Up is a partner of Zhongguan Sun, uh, Dei Dei Up had a very diversified team of foreign uh, people who were working there for many years. Yeah. So I think they do welcome foreigners as long as they're taking the normal jobs from the Chinese. That makes sense. Like they have to provide value add and they have to fill a specific need that would help bridge cultures together. I, that's also kind of the same in Singapore exactly. as well. Yeah, because I think the level of education, the level of skill set and experience that China now has with their people is only getting higher. What mm. are the prestigious companies that Chinese people want to work for, like in tech? Is it like Alibaba or like ByteDance? <laughs> like what is the Harvard of the tech world? Very good question. Um, well, the thing is, in China, there is a lot of these companies, and it depends on the skill set as well as the uh, uh, the seniority level of every person. If it's a young person, yeah. uh, like a fresh graduate, uh, they always like a lot of them really wish to go and work for ByteDance. Okay. Because ByteDance is one of the companies that really welcome the the young people uh, compared to, let's say, Alibaba where Alibaba mm -hmm. requires fully experienced uh, people, talents to join them and uh, to, to, to join their team and make whatever they have better. So mm -hmm. ByteDance is kind of relying on or really believing in the creativity of the young generation uh, where mm -hmm. Alibaba companies are really centralized companies and they believe that um, uh, people who, who come there should have a specific skill set and experience and you know, like all these standards before you can join them. So that's why if it's a young person, they would almost never try to go to Alibaba because they, they also don't think that it's, it suits my age and, and what I do. And then on the other hand, co companies like ByteDance are really, really hot these days and a lot of companies wish to go there. And then there are some new companies uh, like Pinduoduo. Let's put them in, uh, in another perspective, like mature companies in China are really not that welcoming towards the, the younger generation of graduates. Whereas the newer uh, companies, giants like uh, let's say Kuaishou or ByteDance, these these com companies are really hot among the Chinese. It would be ByteDance if it's these companies, uh, if it's the young people, and if it's experienced people, they would always prefer to go to Alibaba, Tencent, and these companies. I kind of feel like that's also the same um, in the U.S. as well. Um, people like younger people want to work for something that's like innovative, has startup culture. Exactly. Things are a little bit more like relaxed or not mm. relaxed but like it's not as structured right like there's not so it's not so like corporate so yeah um, yeah exactly i think the younger generations don't like bureaucracy there is the 996 work hours right. so do you want to just quickly talk about your experience you've experienced the 996 
before, but you mm-hmm. you said that you like liked it, right? Or like you like your coworkers and you like your work so much that it doesn't feel like nine nine six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a good time right now. There's a good time to introduce something new, <laughs> and that okay. new thing is called Ling Ling Chi or zero zero seven o o seven, which is from the movie, right? Like okay. double, yeah, exactly, double o seven. The meaning for that is that you're working all the time, seven days a week. Oh like gosh. it's like it, there is no working time. It's like anytime the company calls you, you would just go there and and just do the job. The other perspective that like the, the extreme of the nine nine six, where you mm-hmm. it, where, which which means you work from nine a.m. to nine p.m. six days a week. The zero zero seven means that or double seven a double seven means that you're working all the time without any limits and seven days a week. About the nine nine six, my company Daily App was not a nine nine six. However, we, we kind of had like most of the time more pressure than the 996 because we had no exact time to come or to go home. Usually, of course, it would be morning, like nine or 10, we, we just go to office. But then when we go home, it depends on the, the amount of work. The earliest, for example, would be normally, the earliest would be 10, 10, 30, and then later would be 11, 30, and then like really late would be one. Wow. And it's normal. I don't, I, I, I would never, we would never complain like, oh my God, it's so late and I'm so <laughs> tired. It, 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 these things does not exist. Like, okay, it's just another working day and it will go working here, right? And then there's the, the 007, uh, and at some point we would also be 007 yeah. because uh, because we would be so so busy and some project needs like this week or this few four days four five days like we would work and really late and then early morning and then we would almost not have uh, not not have a weekend again it's very normal not to have a weekend it's okay and especially for me I would never complain because I went to Beijing to learn some new things to challenge myself if I can just get the pressure in mm-hmm. Beijing and then the people the young people who go to Beijing we have a kind of a saying where we say. Uh, if you can if you can just live in Beijing if you can stay alive if you can stay alive then you're doing pretty good like you're, you're so awesome yeah yeah because it, because there's a lot of pressure I would also tell myself I am here in Beijing I'm not here to I don't know to just go sightseeing I'm not here to do anything else I'm here to work and that's what I'm doing no that's admirable honestly like I feel like 996 it, like when I first read about it, I was like, wow, I was like, that's terrifying. But I think at some <laughs> startups too, you kind of do the same thing, but you know, you just allocate your hours differently. Like maybe you're not at work exactly. like from that entire time, but maybe, you know, you, you're still working like even at home, right? Like during your like eating or things like that. I mean, did you guys at least have like in the kitchen? Do you have a ping pong table? Like what, what did you get? What did you guys get? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question also. Yeah. Like what would we do? Yeah. When you were not working, right? We we actually had a our working space. The the co-working space was a, such a relaxed space, and we had a lot of free time and like we, very relaxed environment. Actually, it wasn't like we had to sit in the office on a on a tight cha- chair and table like you can't move. No, we had very nice uh, co- uh, couches all over the place. And like if you you're you're supposed to finish what you're doing, no matter where you sit and how you sit, you stand up sit mm-hmm. down you lie down whatever you do it doesn't matter mm-hmm. so we had that you know flexibility in our working uh, style which was so awesome so amazing and there like we had so uh, very beautiful uh, place relaxing cozy even uh, especially at night sometimes so that was that part and about the uh, the entertainment part or the sports part uh, we did play a lot of badminton oh, uh, wow. with our like colleagues. in the in the like office every, yeah like we uh, in the office outside uh, as we just we open the door and outside there's a very nice space where we can just uh, oh, play bet. a lot of sports some people like 80 percent of us would play badminton yeah then we would just get our rackets and start playing for 30 40 minutes and then just cool off and then just start start working again oh wow so so yeah we did have like kind of uh flexibility as well yeah. as doing some sports there yeah. uh, to kind of flex our muscles here and there a little bit before getting back to the serious job. Did you guys have like beer in the office? Like Qingdao or like, have you had Er Guoto? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's... <laughs> Which is the like good, vodka almost, things, right? Yeah. One of the things about me is that I don't drink, oh, but yeah, then yeah. I would uh, enjoy when my colleagues or my co-working space people were drinking. And then yeah. one of our companies, um, who was in the corking space, mm-hmm. they would like 80, 90% of the time, every Friday night, they would call everyone, like 
guys, we are going to put out this party for us, for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of drinks and anything to eat. Just this very nice, friendly environment where you could just go and grab something to drink, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, uh, just anything, just just have a have a cool time. So we had that as well. And then for the day team, uh, depending on our milestone, like really small milestones, we would celebrate it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on from what perspective you look at it, I don't drink. So, but then they would tell me, like as they were drinking, like this is what I'm drinking, that's how it feels, and and I would ask because I've never got drunk or I never drink, so I would ask a lot of questions. So, what is the difference between this drink and paijio, and then what yeah. is the difference of paijio with the vodka? And then they would just tell me, and it was so awesome. And you know that one of the things that make the work itself uh, so relaxing and mm. uh, hard to give up is the people there, right? Like this team that is there and uh, uh, the environment that they create, yeah. which is personal, and then it will affect all the people around us. Mm -hmm. And then I was really happy with the team that we had there in Day Day Up. Uh, we had a lot of fun from eating, going out to eat. Oh, and then one of the things that we did, we would always go out to eat, mm -hmm. like 60, 70% of the time. Well, that's great. I think that's so important. It's also like the culture, right? Like the company culture, the people that you work with, the things that motivate you to do better for that company that you're working for. So it's good that you had such a great yeah. like experience uh, working at you know the innovation center in China. So I'm gonna wrap this up with a last question, okay. and it will be more about just your personal experience like working in tech in China. What has been kind of like the main takeaway from your entire experience, and what are you hoping to do with it in the future? About the future of technology in China, from my personal perspective, I think that China, the Chinese government, mm -hmm. has really prioritized uh, education, uh, not only education, but technology as a whole, and they're investing it, and Zhong Guan can be an example for that, mm -hmm. um, because they're, uh, they're, they're being backed by the government. So the Chinese government has put a lot of money, a lot of capital, a lot of resources Mm -hmm. on technology itself they really want to grow their technology and by all means and which is a great which creates a lot of opportunities both for chinese as well as the international companies mm -hmm. i as a foreigner being in this environment i feel that that i can be a part of this process i can mm -hmm. be a part of this uh, this procedure which let's say that if i join right now within 10 years how much can china develop i can probably also be in this process of development within uh, the, 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 how China is developing, which I'm really satisfied. I'm really happy to be a part of this. So this is one perspective. Another perspective is that the 5G itself, I did not really know what it, what is 5G and why, why is it so important and why there's so many thoughts and questions about 5G. And as you know, that China has been a pioneer in implementing 5G. Why 5G is important, uh, of course, you probably already know, but just to give you an experience from what I, the, the way I see things, is that 5G is going to kind of change the base of our technology as a whole, and it's going to add a lot of new technologies with it. And for example, some of them would be, for example, uh, driver, uh, driverless cars, uh, that, that is going, that is, we have, we can see in a lot of companies here in China who are testing all of these technologies, and then working on robots and AI and deep tech. So the areas that is going to really affect are going to be mainly these areas. And moving on with these Chinese technologies, as I can see the future, a lot of things are going to be so different from, from right now, right today. Like let's say five years from now, just like it's so different from five years ago, or so maybe five, six years ago when there was no Alipay or Trifubao or or all these technologies that we use daily right now in China. And it's so normal when you go to another country, they don't exist. And you feel like, how are you even living in this technology less society, even though they're so developed. Uh, so, so these things have become a part of their life, our lives here in China, especially this WeChat and Alipay, things like Xianyu, it's like an application where you buy or sell secondhand things, mm -hmm. uh, which is mainly very widely being used these days. Like whatever you have, a computer, a glass, any, it's pretty much, you know, just take a picture, it's there within one day, someone calls you or sends you a message like, I want this thing, okay, sold that, send them my ID, and that's it, it's so fast. So the infrastructure has been going on really fast and these facilities that uh, we are using are going to be so much different in five years from now, from my own perspective, mm -hmm. especially because I love gaming and I know that there is one of the biggest uh, improvements are going to be in VR, 
VR and AR that is going to have a big change. So the future, especially in China, mm -hmm. since they have built those really basic technology centers, technology pillars for themselves, and now they're going to leverage on these pillars to go forward with really huge speed. And that is going to bring a lot of change in the way that people are living in five to 10 years. And that will, one of them would be the implementation of 5G. And we can also see that China, if you look at the list of unicorns right now, uh, China is going to be, I think they have three unicorns in top five. Uh, so that means that a lot of new uh, Chinese companies with a lot of potential are being created and supported. And they're also being welcomed by the Chinese people, yeah. uh, which is giving them the opportunity and potential to grow in the future. So I think that uh, we're the, the future that we are going to see uh, within these five years, even education, there's a lot of focus on education technology, like everything is going to be so different five years from now. Yeah. And what about you? Like, what are your forward looking plans? Um, also kind of a side tangent too. like, I know that right now they're probably the most amount of billionaires in China. So maybe you are the next one. <laughs> Don't forget. About <laughs> I would be the next, the next foreign billionaire. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Let's see. The, if the, if I, I hope that's true. Uh, and mm. I do, and I do have some plans. Well, not about becoming a billionaire, but mostly about <laughs> having a startup here in China. Yeah. Uh, and as I mentioned at the very beginning, I have a very good uh, background with education since I was a teacher for two years. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, I've also been in touch and involved with technology a lot since I was a child, since the first time I had a computer and mm -hmm. everything has so much changed for me. So my goal is to uh, have or to emerge myself into education technology and uh, first of all to learn it as much as possible to learn from from really small to really important big things and hopefully one day uh, be able to through the knowledge that I uh, gain with my experience to be able to provide a better education for those who are unprivileged yeah. for example those those kids who are not having any access to education in countries like afghanistan even in china the gap between villages remote villages and cities like beijing is like 80 90 percent like you can't even compare the education quality uh, so the effectiveness and efficiency of education uh, will hopefully increase and, and I hope that I can join and be a part of this change and hopefully take that and implement this in my own country as well as all the other unprivileged children all over the world. That's awesome. Yeah, and I have, you know, I mean, I think just knowing you, I think this is something you can definitely do and achieve. And I hope that you know, you're you. able to make this a reality and get funding for it, which I definitely think you'll have no problem finding. But I think that's great. You have such a big part. And again, I really appreciate you and your time <laughs> for kind of exploring Thanks these topics with me. Yeah. Um, do Thanks you have a lot. It's been also be, uh -huh. been a very good experience for me to share these, uh, uh, because there are some thoughts in our mm -hmm. minds that we never know they exist. They're unconsciously existing in our mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when someone asks those questions, so we mm -hmm. are able to also consciously be aware of that knowledge and those yeah. questions. Yeah. So thank you for also asking these questions, these <laughs> questions, and hopefully, uh, I will be more aware of these answers that I gave you and they will also make a difference in my own personal life as well as uh, your viewers. Yeah. And uh, thanks a lot for your time as well. Yeah, it's thank been, you. Uh, it's been, it's really amazing. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. I'm a digger. I dig all the good, you know, <laughs> all the good answers out of you. So thanks for yeah, You definitely time. did. Yeah. Thanks awesome. a lot too. Thank you. And uh, have a good day ahead. You too. Anyways, let's do that again. Okay. Let's take three. <laughs> take three. <laughs> <laughs> Your take three was very funny. You should kind of make let's it. Let's leave this, right? Take three. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll say it. <laughs> okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> you were doing three, but then. Okay, okay, ready? Take three.